hey what is going on guys welcome back to another video and today we're going to talk about event delegation why would you use event delegation and then we'll eventually talk about how so to get started with event delegation first i have to talk about event bubbling in javascript i'm going to use a small illustration to explain that so this is basically a representation of your dom so you have a strong element nested inside a td and the td is nested inside a table it's not directly in nested inside a table. You have a TR and then TR is nested inside the table. What event bubbling basically is, is if you click on this strong element, the event kind of travels up the DOM. So if you click on strong, you'll receive the same event on TD and then you'll receive the event on table and then it will go up. This is very essential when you want to implement event delegation. Now let's just talk about why would you use event delegation? So here I have a very common use case. So you have a table inside of which you have a TR inside of which you have a TD and in the use cases, when you click on this TD, something should happen. Maybe change the color of the TD to a different color. So the traditional approach to do this is basically you traverse the table, you find each TD and then you use the add event listener API to add a event, for example, a click event. So this is a good approach and it gets the work done. But when you think about large table, so for example, a table which has uh, a million rows and it's not really uncommon use case nowadays with big data and data driven applications. So the traditional approach fails because you have to traverse a million rows and add an event on each of those columns, those account to a million events. So you have to have those many objects created inside of the JavaScript heap and that causes a lot of memory. This will affect your UX a lot and that's not something that you want. So it's not really the smart solution. Now another flaw with the earlier approach or the traditional approach is that imagine you adding rows dynamically inside your table. Now it's going to be very, very difficult to do that because you add a row and then you iterate and then you add an event. So it, it's not really impossible, but it becomes very, very tedious to avoid all of this and to do it in a very smart way. We do something which we call as event delegation and what ev event delegation is, it basically means a parent handles the child's events. So you delegate the child's event to the parent. So the parent is responsible for handling events which are triggered onto your child. And the two problems that I mentioned are solved very, very easily with event delegation. So if you have a million rows, you just have one event on the parent. And the second thing is even if you add more rows into your table, the table isn't destroyed and recreated. So the event, no matter you're adding rows dynamically or statically, it really doesn't matter its execution. Now let's just take a look at some code. So here what I ha basically have are two implementations, one which is the traditional one and one with event delegation. So basically what the code is trying to do is whenever I click on any TD, it changes its background color to red. So this is basically the traditional approach. You use query selector and you select all of those TDs. And this is the third column. So I've used the nth child selector. And then for each TD, you just add an event listener. And this, this is, this basically works because you just have four rows and you don't see any performance hits. But when it comes to a million rows, you'll see a lot of uh, lag and time for processing. So you have the query selector, you select, you iterate over each TD and you add an event. And in that event, you kind of change the style, uh, the background style to red. So this is without event delegation. Now, how do you do this with event delegation? So let me just explain it, explain the code. So you say document.query selector, this selects the table, which is the parent element and you add an event listener on of click and you basically check the e dot src element. Now e dot src element is basically the element which triggered the event in the first place. So this is the source element. The, this is the element on which the event has occurred and this has bubbled to the table and I have that event listener on the table and because of event bubbling, you can access click on table. And you add event listener, click and you, you check e.src element tag name is td and then you basically change the background color to red. So even if you add more rows into your table, the implementation wouldn't change. And neither would this because you are using for each, but we are creating way less events uh, in this implementation as compared to this implementation. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you 
like this video be sure to hit the like button and if you are new here be sure to hit the subscribe button and thank you guys for joining and i'll see you guys in the next one